What is five second testing? Well, the five second test is basically a situation where you show somebody a picture or on a screen, basically a design of some sort, usually a UI design. And within that five seconds, the person's looking just to get in a general idea of what they think the website or the app is about. So after the five seconds is up, you take it away and then you tell them or you ask them to give them their, your impressions, their impressions of what they think it's about. All right. So as you can see here, just just to elaborate a little bit further, I the five second test is run by showing an image to a participant for just five seconds, after which the participant answers questions. Um, the image you test could be a website, graphic design, app design, prototype, wireframe, logo, or copy. All right, so it's anything that needs to communicate a message in a sense. And so why just five seconds? Well, the studies have shown that visitors only spend a few seconds assessing your website before deciding whether or not to leave. And one study has even shown that users can make an initial assessment in as little as 50 milliseconds, which is quicker than a blink of an eye. So why is this important if you're designing for a client or if you're designing for your, a project for yourself? Well, within that five seconds, if you're not able to uh, effectively answer the question from the, the visitor's perspective, which is what is this website about, then you're gonna have a high bounce ratio, which basically means you're gonna have a lot of people leaving your site because they're not gonna wanna try to figure out and put a, a puzzle together in a sense, so to speak, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put myself in the shoes of one of these per test participants. I'm going to take the five second test across maybe about 10 or so different websites to see how effective these websites are at basically communicating effectively what their site or their app is about. So the way I'll do this is I'm going to use this right here, discover.com. Take me to a useful website. I click this. It's gonna load up a random website that I don't know in a new browser tab and right when that happens, I'm gonna use this countdown timer at five seconds here at Google and just hit start. And then I'll switch to the other tab after the five seconds and then I'll try to answer that question. What is this website about, you know? And then also give my thoughts about how they can improve. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Linode. Now as a front end developer or a designer, you know that you need a personal portfolio. And if you use a website builder like Wix or Squarespace, they lack total customization and they lock you into using their platform. But to be a pro, you need to use the tools that the pros actually use. So level up, start building your own projects and your own portfolio on an enterprise level content management system like WordPress or Drupal. Now, real web development sometimes requires knowledge of spinning up servers, managing domain names, and setting up an occasional staging environment. And there's no better or simpler way to learn the ins and outs of hosting your website than with Linode Cloud Hosting. Linode Cloud Hosting makes it as easy as possible for you to deploy a WordPress or Drupal website in seconds with a free Linode one-click app marketplace. So click on the very top link here in the YouTube description to get your free Linode account along with $20 of free hosting and all the tools that you need to build enterprise class websites. All right, so here's how this is going to work. I have discover.com right here. I'm going to click on this take me to you useful website button and then click start on this five second uh, countdown. Once it starts beeping, it's I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear the beep, but once it gets to zero, it's going to beep and I'm going to switch off to this tab right here uh, because it opens the new site in another tab. And I'm going to just give you my impression of what it was within that five seconds of what I think that it was. And then we'll go back to the tab and make sure that maybe, maybe it was wrong, maybe I was right, or maybe I just don't know. And that's what we want to avoid as much as possible. So here we go. Take me to a useful website, start. All right, so that I knew right away. So they, it's obviously about user manuals i uh, and you could do a search for them uh based on these cop the, these popular brands product manuals retrieved search for over five hundred thousand product manuals this is great copy uh it, it addresses exactly what it is it's showing you popular brands right here good visual indicators that will really help a person within that five seconds to understand what this this uh, page is about so i really like this one that one passes the test. Let's try another one. So we're going to do a few of these here. So take me to a useful website. Start. Okay, so this is something about like a timer. Now it was called egg timer, but is it like a countdown timer? So I have confusion. I do have confusion. Let's go back to it. 
Start a timer for five minutes and hit go. So it is a countdown timer, but I'm not really certain. Why is it egg? Why is it egg? And then this go button, I wasn't really sure. sure. Like it, it, it didn't really come out and stand out to me because it's gray, it's monotone. Um, a simple countdown timer. This is bad placement because this is actually the first time I, I scan this right now. A headline needs to really stick out. You don't use welcome to egg timer because this is, in terms of visual hierarchy, this is what is taking the eye space. Uh, this is what I saw right away. A simple countdown timer should take this place up here much more. And also, this call to action area, start a timer, five minutes, and go, should also be front and center as well. And really, it's kind of an afterthought in the way it's designed. So this one does not pass the test. All right, we'll do another one. Take me to a useful website and start. All right. This one did a good job. So... It's basically converting any website into a PDF and making it readable or print friendly. Make any web page print friendly and PDF. Copy and paste a URL. Dead super simple. I, I quickly scanned down here as well within that five seconds. We have to get the browser extension. Uh, so they obviously have a browser extension. But that's about all I saw within this five seconds right here. But because they, they designed it well, we have good ad copy here, a good call to action. Uh, I knew pretty much exactly what this page is about. So this one passes the test. All right, try another one. All right. All right, so I did read the main headline top documentary films. Um, going back to it, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have the the name which is the 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 actual dot com up here. So this lets me know just from the keywords in the domain what this is pretty much about. We have DVDs right here addressing it, um, featured documentaries. Uh, th this is actually not that bad. I think most people would understand just from this line right here that this is a site that will feature, uh, documentary based films and it's just you know I saw really even though they don't have what you would consider a traditional uh, headline you could still understand what's happening here relatively quickly so you don't 100 percent always have to have like a big old headline uh, especially if the name is really you know if the purpose is in the name let's do another one oh I hit start what is this about? No, let's redo that. Take me to a useful website and start. Okay. No clue exactly what that one was about. Absolutely no clue. If it seemed like a chat application, that was my initial idea. Sort my list. Yeah, this is... I don't like this interface at all. You put like a list. It's some sort of like list task option. And that's what I gathered initially. Um, like a, a to-do app, a to-do list. Everybody's doing those um, when they're learning something, a new code, like a new language or whatever. But I don't like that one at all. That was not good. Let's, uh, let's hit another one here. Please enter a zip code or city or click locate to use a current location. Uh, okay. All right. This is a good example right here of uh, something to avoid. They did a couple things right, but then a couple things they didn't do. Um, they made this area right here quite, you know, please enter a zip code or city. What happened is that right here, I read, I was focused, all my eye, my, my attention was focused on this central area right here. And my immediate question within that first four seconds was why? Why should I enter my freaking address right here? What is it, what's gonna happen? And then that last second, I looked up here to see can I fly a kite? And then I knew that's why. So what they should do is take can I fly a kite and make this that copy right there. And then take this right here and make this please enter a zip code or whatever. Uh, so the primary headline needs to be, can I fly a kite? 
not the, the, the way they have it right here. So this would fail the test, but it would be a very easy fix because it's a simple UI as well. Let's try another one. Go on, you gonna load? Nope, I'll try another one. Okay, things aren't loading right now. Learn a language forever, or for free forever, get started. All right, so it seemed a little vague to me. I wanted a little bit more information. I Obviously it's a language learning app for free, um, but really, and Duolingo is a huge site, isn't it? They're, like, they're a massive company, like 476. That's a massive company. Uh, let's go back to the, let's go back to this page right here. Learn a language for free forever. Get started. I mean, it's, it's, it's very simple, but it almost seemed too simple in my opinion. And it seemed really juvenile. Uh, like it's, it's a little bit amateur in terms of the, the design. Like there's a, a little clip art world icon here. I, uh, so while I knew it's a, it's a language learning app, which I guess does address what this service is, I think it could be improved a lot in other ways, but we are only focused on the whole five second test. So I guess this would pass it, but I think, man, they could really improve this entire section up here. They, they need a new design in my opinion. Okay, we'll just try uh, maybe a couple more here, just so you know you guys really understand. Maybe we get some better, some good examples so I can elaborate further on what to do, what not to do. Uh, here we go. All right, so this one is about making web banners. Very simple, they addressed it right in the ugly headline and subheadline. Even though it's ugly, I was able to scan this part and I and it told me exactly what's happening here, but really it's suffering from a lack of visual hierarchy. You know, this should be like this should definitely be more like uh this right here. Let me find this. Uh font weight. They put normal. Why would you put normal for that? Bold, man. You want that to, thing to stick out. They're using pixels here. We'll do like 30 pixels. Oops. 30 pixels. So now that's a, that's a, a little bit better of uh, a, a reinforcement between these two different pieces of type. Otherwise it looks like this and they look like they get lost, but create your own customized banners online to make your own stunning banners, social media graphics, logos, flyers, and more for free. Um, so it, it's not that bad, but yeah, who's ever dealing with the type here, they screwed it up here as well. So there's a lot of type issues, but again, that that's nothing to do with what we're talking about. This would actually, Probably I uh, passed the test, but they could do a much better job. So I give them maybe like a 55%. All right, so let's uh, restart this and we'll do maybe one or two more. Print what you like. Let's you print the good parts of any web page while skipping ads and other junk. All right, so basically this was like the, the sub headline really addressed what it was. I didn't get through it all within five seconds, but it still made sense. My, my eye was immediately uh, focused on print what you like. Uh, and that's kind of vague. So this right here addressing and getting more into the specific details does make sense. That seemed like a very web 2.0. Uh, oh God. Nope, absolutely no clue what this page is about. Why? because we have a lack of what's called visual hierarchy. I've always harp on this, but we're not really sure where to look first because all the text is the same size. Everything has seems to have equal priority, right? So I have no clue. I don't want to sit here reading all of this text. This is a prime, this is probably the best example of a site or an app that completely fails the five second test. And if you want to fail, this is how you're going to structure your site. Uh, because it's it, there's a lot of text. It's all equal in terms of font size. Uh, we do have different colors, but these colors are all over the place still. So nothing really stands out and really helps to address. There's no illustrations really. Uh, just, yeah, overall really bad job. I think this is gonna be a good one to stop uh, because yeah, I think you guys get the point. You know, You want people within those five seconds to be able to understand what your site is about so that they're less likely to bounce or to leave and more likely to stay and learn more.
All right, everybody, let me know what you think about that. Hopefully, you know how you now have a new arsenal in your toolkit in terms of being a UI UX designer. I, uh, when it comes to building landing pages, really uh, that that are really meant to to communicate a message. So. Hopefully, from this point on, you're going to be able to more accurately and effectively communicate the message and really reduce the bounce ratio, keep people on the site much longer. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.